Hey everyone, Merrick's here, bringing you another video. This one is going to be on Stevie Ray, NWO Hollywood. Uh, so we finally have uh, Stevie Ray in the game. I'm very excited about this. He is an Attitude Era powerhouse. He's got two links, former Harlem Heat. The red moves that deal damage will deal 150% more damage. That tag link is with the new um, free Booker T card, the monthly free card. And he's got the NWO link, matching black gems, charge moves of that color by one more move point, and attitude era gems do 10% more damage. He has the one gear, the NWO Hollywood gear. He is a trainer. At 9k, moves that generate botch gems will create six more botch gems. So replacing Arn Anderson, um, for those of you who weren't playing when Arn was available, uh, now Stevie Ray will generate botch gems and you can get a botch gem guy. So that's pretty cool. I have five builds for you guys today. Uh, my favorite is going to be last. I got two three stars, a four star, and two five stars. The five star one is without uh, rare trainers and one is with. Um, let's get started with this three star move set. Uh, it features the invertic, inverted atomic drop, 13 red MP, deal 163k damage and choose a 7x1 area to swap into red gems. 9 MP purple flying clothesline, deal 55k and choose 3 gems to make into column break gems. And bicycle kick, 5 MP purple, deal 22k damage and increase your red MP by 6. For the entourage, we're going to run with Woods uh, for 4 more purple MP. Uh, Batista for red moves, deal 50% more damage and 1 more red. Zombie Charlotte for a 25% increased chance of purple gems. And uh, Drew so that we can create one more column break and choose four. So with this one, uh, we're setting up for turn two. Oh, let me go over what my strap is going to have for the whole preview. Going to be running Cheap Shot, fairly common with me. I'm sure you guys are used to seeing Cheap Shot. Um, we got the red move damage metal for Fury, so we're running double Fury with the red move damage, and then um, a 22% all gem. So it's not maxed, uh, but it's not bad. 135% red move damage, about 70% on the gem damages. So uh, let's get out here, take a look, and see what it looks like. We're going to be going against Ivar at 5-star gold on the road um, to give a good look. So we're going to go 5-star versus 5-star. And powerhouse versus powerhouse. 5-star gold, rather. And... Um, for this build set, even though I'm running Cheap Shot, um, the uh, oh, I think that's the time once again plate, or it's the ro what the rock is cooking. I'm sorry, what the rock is cooking plate there. Um, and that one, uh, if you break three red, you get three purple, so that would help recycle this move set. Um, so you could also go that route. In fact, that would probably be better than Cheap Shot for the recycling factor. Uh, but uh, Cheap Shot is what I like for the build I like the most, so I decided to put Cheap Shot on for this preview. So the goal here is a purple match turn one, um, which we have. If you don't have a purple match turn one, uh, it can get a little more difficult, so that's why Zombie Charlotte's on there for that 9k ability, because we are trying to load a 13 MP red. Um, we do have a red swipe here, but I want the purple match for two reasons. One, it reloads the move, that move, and then it fills the column break. So we're going to ignore the row break of red, which he likely will take. Because uh, we need to fill our other moves. And the reason the rock plate would be good for recycling um, is because we are going to choose... Uh, area of red and that would give us three purple um, although with a board like this uh, recycling certainly isn't nearly as big a concern but you don't always have that right so just give you a little more consistency um, and that sort of thing so this column obviously we want um, and then so that gives us four that gives us five purple six and we'll take this uh 
We'll take this um, column here for the other purple. Not a lot of red on the board, but we do make seven red here. So I'm more concerned with filling the purple for the recycle if we need it. Usually hits pretty hard. Um, right around 900k, that was, I would say, was pretty average while I was testing him. Cheap shot went off, so he didn't get a good first kick out. And he doesn't even come close to kicking out. So that's a purple match turn one and set up for turn two. Uh, not bad. Available at three star. Not bad. Let's take a look at the other three star set. Uh, plates would stay the same in this. Uh, oh, a double fury is how I like running uh, pretty much all these move sets. Um, there's some, obviously, you have some flexibility. Double armor is going to work good to keep them down uh, as well. All right, so next one for three star, we're just going to trade out um, purple move for red move. Technically, I think this one might even be available at two star. So we're bringing in the military press slam, 11 MP purple, deal 120k damage, and choose a 2x2 two two area to make into X break gems. And we're going to swap uh, Batista for Butch for 4 red MP to start. And we're going to swap Zombie Charlotte for Typhoon. Since we're doing some board destructory, we're going to go gem damage on this. You could go move damage trainers. They're a little bit more rare, obviously, than these uh, free trainers here. Snoop and Gooker are definitely more rare than the uh, free MLC guys we're going to use. And then we're going to use Lacey, just because we're blowing up the board for purple and green gem damage. To give a little bit more damage. And let's check this one out. You notice pretty much uh, Stevie's red moves have really high damage, so that tag link with him adding 150% more, oof, I mean, that's going to be beefy. Very spicy. So the red MP move is loaded to start. This should fill both of our other moves. And we're ready to go turn one. So ideally, in a perfect world, uh, we will be able to break uh, enough purples to recycle this if we need to. And that doesn't look like it's going to be a problem on this board at all. Um, go over here with them. And let's drop the 1x7 red right here so we also get these two red there. That'll get us a couple of extra red, although the... Uh, Crossbreaks probably would have hit it anyway. It looks like they would have hit it anyway. So, 860k turn 1 to start. I, this moveset is actually really solid. Um, really fast and can hit pretty hard. So, I like that one quite a bit, actually. Surprisingly a lot. As long as you can get it turn 1. The double MP trainer obviously doesn't hurt you too much. Uh, and that was fast, so let's go to the 4-star move set. And this one is interesting. Also, I don't know what the Stevie Ray plate is yet, so we'll have to wait and see what that plate is. That could obviously play a part in um, the plates a person would use if they had it. And you should find out this afternoon, or early, early this morning, or late this morning, rather. Um, so we're going to keep the inverted atomic drop and bring in both of the black moves. We're bringing in the Sidewalk Slam. That's a 7 MP black. Deal 37k damage and destroy 5 random black gems. So a black that destroys black. Uh, almost fully recycles itself. Two away. You could put a trainer on to fully recycle it. But then, you know, you need 7 blacks on the board. And then the Backbreaker 10 MP black. Deal 48k damage and choose a 2x7 area to swap into red gems. The pin bar will not move. Uh, that's 10 MP black. Very nice. We're going to go with Bray for more black MP to start. So we can load the um, Sidewalk Slam turn 1. In Feud, do note, you will need to run two MP trainers, two black MP trainers, to get this turn 1. Not the end of the world. You'll lose a little bit of move damage with Batista. 
um, and one red MP, but not the end of the world to start turn one in feud with this set. And then we're going to trade Lacey out for NWO Show for more black gems on the starting board. We only need um, three, I believe, uh, but it might be two, but I think it's three. And um, this just will help make sure we get three. Very unlikely you won't have three blacks on the board, especially putting Show on there. Should make it pretty consistent. The only concern with this one... Uh, at least from a turn one perspective, is um, the black destroy. Since it's uh, random, uh, you can sometimes force an early pin. So that is the, the one concern with this. You can see we easily have enough black gems on the board. Okay, now you don't get a full recycle of the, of the other black move, so if you can uh, drop a cascade that into blacks. If there's a black on the bottom, great. Um, if you can't, it's not the end of the world. We're just going to connect a bunch of reds here. Pin bar's not going to move. You can see we did get blacks to fall in. Also, do keep in mind with this, you have a free swipe open. So since we have a lot of pin bar, if we want to get another charge on a black, say we didn't get a cascade, I would do a swipe like this, that would get us one more MP, and then we're on to the next, this move set. So, um, that's helpful to know as well. There are situations where you would need that. And this is not going to be quite as big of hit, so a little bit harder to pin him and keep him down with this. So that's only 580k. Overall, you can see we're doing a lot of damage, but... Uh, not a big pin. So that's the downside with this moveset. Uh, without a big pin to keep them down, you can um, sometimes just have to drain them down. But um, there are other interesting things you can do if the pin bar moves uh, far enough with this. Nice, nice cascade. So, I mean, if we really wanted to, we could hit this and try not to force a pin, drop it at top, up top, um, and then, you know, hit the black destroy move. But this is our biggest pin option, uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and try and force a pin here. Because that was a nice little move, and cheap shot went off, so much better chance to keep him down and pin him here. Like that. So that's not a bad moveset too, recycles really nicely, uh, got some gem damage, some move damage, it's workable, that's a 4 star. 5 star is where to me he gets really really fun, his finisher is one of the more interesting finishers in the game to me, and uh, I'll sort of talk about that. We're going to see two variations, one a little more offensive, um, one more defensive sort of, but with rare trainers. Um, this finisher is slick. I really, really like it. Uh, so you don't get his finisher till 5-star. He has one finisher. Um, it's the Slapjack. It's his 5-star move. That's the one we're going to bring in here. 13 MP red finisher deal 198k damage and decrease the damage of all your opponent's gems by 65% for 4 total turns. This includes both your turn and your opponent's turn. Four turns with that descriptor means this is in place for all three turns. So you have built in 65% gem defense on your pin. Um, so that's better than double armor, guys. So just keep that in mind. Let that sink in. Double armor is 40%. This is 65%. Pretty impressive. All right. Let's see what this looks like. Uh, keep in mind, just like the last move set. Um, in Feud, you would need to drop Batista for a second Black MP Trainer. Um, all the Trainers are going to stay the same as we had before. Um, for the plate, I think Head Games would be uh, beneficial for this. Of course, pending the Stevie Ray plate um, or Cheap Shot. I prefer Cheap Shot the most. Assuming it stacks with the move, I don't really know how to test it um, very well. 
Um, but I, it, I do believe it does stack because the cheap shot graphic will show up along with the pin. So I'm assuming it stacks. Again, the only concern is potentially an early pin with the Cascade. We should be fine. And um, you potentially uh, don't recycle at all with this other than what we just got. But that's not as big a concern as one might think. Um, simply because that descriptor on the finisher makes it very, very hard to almost impossible to kick out of this pin that's coming turn one. You see Cheap Shot went off. It's only 530k, but watch how little damage Ivar will do trying to kick out. He could hit some massive cascades and still not kick out. So we got three turns. There's a row break. It barely moved. It does look like the cheap shot stacks. Six gems dropped in. So you got a row break, uh, a cascade, and a three break, and you still had half of the half of the bar left. Uh, Stevie Ray is really good. I love this finisher. Uh, super cool finisher. Combination of offense, defense, but rolled into one. Uh, big fan of it. It is a high charge, but you can get to it uh, turn one. So let's take a look at it with my preferred way of running it because you guys know I like double armor honky tonk man. Um, what we're going to do, since we essentially have built in armor with the finisher, and I would keep double fury with this simply uh, so I could kick out of things easier. Uh, we're just going to put honky tonk man in guys and uh, run him a double, essentially double armor honky tonk man, but a little bit better. Um, so let's take a look at this, and this is pretty slick, um, works really well. Of course in Feud, you wouldn't be able to use Honky Tonk Man, that's why I wanted to show the first build. But also, if you have some of the rare trainers, you can buff the finisher damage further. Uh, so if you have Snoop, we're gonna throw Snoop on here. And we're gonna throw Gooker on here, so that's 50% more damage. Also, of course, um... Double armor would be fantastic for this as well. Um, if you double armored and honky tonk man with this finisher, I don't think anyone would ever kick out. And in feud, since you can't run honky tonk man, double armor might make sense. But maybe you're running out of armor, move metals, and stuff like that. So fury is a great second option. Um, but this is really, really good, really good. I think. Um, I'm going to crash is what I think, uh, because I'm doing a preview. It's been a while since I've crashed. So, you know, that's only seems likely that that would happen. Um, what I was going to say is I think a lot of people might end up undervaluing, uh, Stevie Ray or not thinking he's as good as he is simply because it, he's not what you would call sexy, right? Like he doesn't throw a huge finisher up. Uh, he's not going to hit like 1.5 million on this finisher, um, he's not gonna you're not gonna be like wow look at that damage uh, But he's just gonna win and win easily and quickly um, And I think a lot of people are gonna undervalue him because of that and Powerhouse it's very interesting because there's not um, uh, There's some really really good guys like maybe three to five really good powerhouses but you could maybe make an argument for most of them being the best depending on the situation whether you have gears plates that kind of thing um, and I think Stevie Ray certainly is gonna fit into that equation depending on what you value uh, I like quick easy fast wins so I mean I'm inclined to really like this guy I hope I get him um, it would make for an interesting choice um, he's really good and I love the finisher and the style on it. So, like I said, I think a lot of people are going to undersell this. But just, just watch with Honky Tonk Man on here, too. 530k. Hopefully he gets a lot of cascades, just so you guys can see how unlikely it is. I mean, look at that. Uh, the pin bar is barely even moving. Granted, he hasn't cascaded, but it just doesn't move. You can see, I mean, the, you're not kicking out. So, again, Stevie Ray is amazing. Really easy wins, especially once you get to 5-star in this finisher. 
I do think people are going to undervalue him uh, because he's not, like I said, he's not going to wow you with a 1.5, you know, 1 million damage move. Uh, but he's going to win, win fast, and win a lot. So huge fan of this card. Hope I get it. A lot of fun to play. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, also, the tag link with Booker is going to be ridiculous for a male mail showdown as far as move damage. However, the charges are very high. So it's not going to be an easy thing to fill like in showdown. Uh, for tours and stuff, though, the tag link will demolish. But like, you know, realistically, a seven charge move in showdown is super high, right? So uh, keep that in mind, too. Uh, but he is super fun to play. I love him as a feud card. He's going to destroy people on tours for you as well. Uh, again, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Very interested to hear what you have to say. I'm very excited we have Stevie Ray in the game finally, and I'm definitely not disappointed in how he plays and how he turned out. Very, very good card. Um, remember to like, subscribe, and share, guys. And thanks for watching, and good luck out there.